So Jeremy, you talked about Bob Lazar during your talk and your feelings about his case, but I guess uh, now that we had that Q&A last night, uh, if you could kind of reiterate uh, your feelings and also because you've been do involved with a lot of interviews with him lately and, and seemingly have become a friend of his, but also uh, maybe what you thought of the Q&A. Well, in what you just said, um, my feelings have nothing to do with the Bob Lazar case. Um, I looked at it and have been looking at it, um, not through a standpoint of feeling. Bob is a friend, and uh, that has nothing to do with why I believe Bob Lazar, and has nothing to do with feelings or emotion. It has to do with um, spending years and years and years investigating his case, and um, being able to see it from every angle from the inside. There's so much misconception about his case. I think it was great that he came up on stage. I mean, you have no idea. Um, my mentor, George Knapp, he's the guy that really helped me with all of my investigation, all of my work, not just on the Lazar case. He had to literally drag Bob. He was so terrified of you guys. And I, I honestly, it was, it was unbelievable. I asked him to sign a few posters. I have a short film out about Bob that was released two nights ago. And he was like, he wouldn't sign the poster. He was like, are you sure people want my, they don't want a clean one? They want my autograph on it? I'm like, Bob, people like your story. They like who you are. You know, you have to do it. So it's like kicking and screaming. I can't believe it's miracles do happen. George and App got him to come and talk to you guys. And you know what I gotta tell you, because he, you, he, he won't, you have no way of knowing. He loved you guys. He, he thought it was so cool that you wanted to hear what he had to say. You gave him a good experience. <laughs> and I, I can tell you the, you know, 100,000 reasons why you should um, look at his story with a rational, non-emotional mind and make the decision for yourself about him. And I'm happy to go into those points, but um, again, all I can say is I believe Bob. I'll t I'm happy to tell you why. Great. I think we'll get into some of those points later on uh, and, and discuss some of those. Hopefully, Bob Lazar will watch this. Yeah. And I, I'm curious myself to find out from the audience uh, if you could clap. I'm kind of putting you on the, the, on the hot seat right now, and uh, maybe your opinion will change towards the end. But... If we could just, you know, from clapping or, or from supporting uh, with a yell or whatever, uh, how many of you believe Bob Lazar? Well, like Bob shared last night, he was very 100. hesitant. I thought that would be the case, and that's what I told him. And I think we have confirmation here and with the Q&A. I just want to say thank you for doing that because <laughs> I, I don't know what you're thinking. And, and just there, it's so cool that you believe him like me, but I hope that your belief is rooted in your personal investigation into the case as much as you can because a belief is something that you will lose immediately if someone throws garbage at you if you haven't earned it, if you haven't spent the time to look at the details unemotionally and with an empirical eye. So I hope that's why you're clapping, but Bob's gonna love it. He's gonna love it. So. It's kind of uh, funny that that should happen right before we get to, I think what many people would feel is Bob's number one skeptic could get okay. to Mark. Well, I just wanted to echo what Jeremy said. You gotta investigate. You gotta check the facts. You gotta go after the evidence. And I know most people believed him, but you didn't ask him what it is they believed. So we'll talk about that, what I don't believe that he has said. Great, that's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> Stanton, um, you, you did a Mirage Man thing here on the audience. You said, you know, what are they applauding for? Am I wrong? And I would like to hear the applause if yes or no. Do you believe in Bob? What you mean is you believe he back-engineered alien spacecraft, is that right? Okay. I just wanted to make sure that Stanton knew and I knew what you were applauding for. No, no offense, but I don't want anything twisted. So. That's right. Okay, can I? Go ahead, Mr. Can Freeman. I untwist? <laughs> do what you gotta do. Okay. I was first introduced to the idea of Bob Lazar 25 years ago 
at the MUFON conference where Bill Moore gave a terrible paper. We won't go into that. Uh, I met George Knapp, heard about Bob Lazar, and everybody was asking me about him because he was being promoted as a nuclear physicist with a master's degree in physics from MIT and a master's in electronics from Caltech. Now those are pretty darn good credentials, if they're real. But I wasn't going to endorse them until I checked on them. I looked at my directory of the American Physical Society, and most physicists belong. And he wasn't there. So I started a probe. And where I have a problem is every time I checked, he found, I found he wasn't telling the truth. Now this is about Bob. This isn't about what he was doing, because he really wasn't saying a lot about what he was doing. And there are two separate questions. I talked to five people at MIT. Nobody ever heard of him including the physics department and the place that has a master's thesis. The legal counsel said there's no way for the government to wipe out anybody's records, which was the argument why anybody couldn't find anything. The legal counsel is sure, MIT's been doing classified work since 1940. I mean, it's not something new for them. Uh, Caltech never heard of him. I asked George Knapp, or George Knapp gave me Bob's high school. It's in New York State, Long Island. Uh, and so I called them, had a call back when Gal dug out his records, and I said, I'm getting different information, you know, about what his, what his background really is. So briefly the conversation was, well, let's see, I have his file. He graduated in August, not with his class. That usually means you failed a course, you know. Okay. Uh, he took a lot of science courses, didn't he? She says, chemistry. What else? Chemistry. Okay. Was he valedictorian right. of his it class? It doesn't mean you failed the course. It may be you just took, you didn't take a class and do the required credits. That's again a, a, a thing that doesn't quite make sense. But Wait, I, I feel you. Let, let me continue. finish it. Yeah. Uh, he, he didn't have any other science courses. Then I asked, was he valedictorian? No. She laughed. And I have to give you the background why I asked that question. I was valedictorian in my high school class in Linden, New Jersey, 1951, a long time ago. And I was accepted at MIT, except I couldn't afford to go. Tuition was 950 bucks. What is it, 27,000 now, I think. So I resented the kind of uh, implication that this guy had graduated from one of the top schools in the country and MIT qualifies. Was he in the top 10 in his class? No. Top 50? No. Now she's laughing. Top 100? No. He was like 265 out of 366, which is the bottom third. Okay, but can we cut to the chase here? Well, he's the getting to The point is that the notion that he went to MIT doesn't stand up. Nobody could find him in a yearbook. None of five people there I talked to, including the registrar, had any connection with him, and he was in the bottom third of his class. And MIT admissions office says you got to be in the top 20 percent. If they'll, they'll bend if it's more than 15, you know. Uh, he so, you know, his, he was lying about having gone to MIT. I'd called Caltech; they never heard of him. He was asked in Rachel, Nevada, home of the infamous little alien, to name some of his professors. He said, uh, let's see, Bill Duxler will remember me from Caltech Physics. I looked in my directory, there's Bill Duxler, I called him. He never taught at Caltech, only at Pierce Junior College, which is a long way intellectually, if not geologically, from uh, Caltech. He checked, Bill, uh, Bob had taken a course under him at the very same time when he was supposedly at MIT, 2,500 miles away. And if you can go to MIT, you don't go to Pierce Junior College. So we've got some dissimulation. Is that a good word? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'd love to say something about that. All right, can Jeremy speak to that now, or do you have Sure, a... well, I've got something else. We're going to go back else. and forth, man. You know, you've got to give me a second. You know, you say something. Okay. So, like, basically, let's just get to the crux of it. The crux of it is none of this is really the point. I mean, really, the point is how did he know that... Go ahead and clap. That's a good one, Bob. That's for you. None of this is really the point. Okay, the point is this. Um, you know, how did Bob know 
that on Wednesday over Papoose Dry Lake that there'd be something. I didn't say he wasn't I there. Know, I know, so we're, we're talking about things that aren't important, so, but, but let's get to the chase here. Let's get to the chase. No, wait, I think Stanton is about to say something that you're going to But did he work at Los Alamos? Surprising. Isn't that the deal? Didn't he? Well, I at, checked on his working at Los Alamos. Right. And I saw Cal the phone directory. It says K slash M after his name. Right. And that means he worked for a subcontractor, not for the land. So, so George Knapp is lying when George Knapp said that he went in with Bob Lazar and that he had the run of the place. He took him into the particle accelerator, that every employee knew him, that he's interviewed a number of people that have worked there with him and that he worked on special projects. George Knapp is lying? I'm saying Bob is lying about having degrees from MIT and Caltech. Okay, great. Keep your eye on if the If a prize. person lies, why should you believe what right. he says about totally. anything? You've never lied to get a chick? Okay, so I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. Stanton, so, would you answer that question, please? <laughs> <laughs> We've all done it. No, okay, so look, look let's, just, let's just cut to the chase here so we don't waste time with everybody going through what's been said for 25 years, diluting the issue. Do I, I can't swear, do I care um, about if Bob Lazar went to MIT or Caltech, well, a little bit. Do I care if he worked at Los Alamos? Yes, I do. Because if Bob Lazar worked at Los Alamos, that's kind of rational for me that he's a scientist. And wait a minute. Oh, wait a second. Oh, he could be a janitor. Got you. A janitor that has access to the Maison facility and everybody there works with him and knows that The Maison facility of... isn't classified, my good man. Right. That's okay. Great. My everybody point... who works there has a okay, clearance. So, so your point is Bob's not a real scientist. Is that what you're saying? Uh, my point is Bob lied deliberately and without a doubt about his credentials. Okay, well, I'm not sure about that, that he lied deliberately and without a doubt, but you're sure about By that. accident? And you've been, and, and you Well, wait about this, Jeremy, Jeremy. So, uh, when it comes to the education, okay, you talked about how you just said, Stanton, that Bob Lazar lied, and so you can't believe anything he said. It makes me very wary of what he said. He also lied, I believe, about saying that they had six, 500 pounds of element 115. So, so it can't be uh, proven that he's a scientist, although it doesn't no, mean it, that it he didn't be. work at Area 51. It can be proven. I have and video let me, of... I, I just have a follow-up question, but the question is related to Richard Doty. Richard Doty was the first one to mention MJ-12 in a document that he says is hoaxed. Did you, you ever hear me cite Richard Doty as an authority for anything? You've admitted he's a liar. If he's a liar and you can't believe what he says, then why can we believe MJ-12 is real? Because my, if you read my book about MJ-12 and my articles, I don't depend on Richard Doty at all. Do you depend I on consider him a disinformation specialist. What about William I Moore? I mean, we know he lied to the UFO community. You wrote a book with him, right? What book did I write with did him? Did you or not? I mean, I don't know. You're friends with him. No, he worked with more. But I mean, what I'm getting at is that uh, just like what Jeremy feels, e even though perhaps some things could not be substantiated, or even if someone lies about one thing, just like you've told me before, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Of course I mean, not. I didn't say Bob was never at Area 51. I yes, didn't say, say he Say it didn't... again. Say it again. Uh, <laughs> That was so gratifying. Thank you. The, look, I tried my darnness with George and so forth. And, and one point that you made that, that George didn't go into was that conversation with the high school. George at one time thought if you worked at Los Alamos, you had to be a scientist. Because George didn't be stop at that one phone call like you calling his high school records. They're not even allowed to give that information out. George kept going, kept going for 25 years. He didn't stop when he got satisfied with one answer. Oh, he didn't go to the school that he said he went to. They admitted that in the first report. George didn't stop. I didn't stop. I have footage of Bob Lazar inside Los Alamos. I mean, you can see it, uh, you know, I hope Bob and George let it come out. It's just, it's ridiculous to me. This is the point. We're missing the point. The, the point, point is, is what? That know? Bob How claims he, he worked on back engineering 
a, a flying saucer, uh, call it what you want. That's right, and he knew exactly where over Papoose Lake on three separate Wednesday nights, the exact time and location. With Why does that prove he's a scientist or knows how they I work? Don't care. First of all, what proves he's a scientist is United Nuclear just got a contract with the Naval Academy to basically take, no, hold on, let me tell you this, this is great. This is this morning, he said uh, or at breakfast, he's, uh, he has a, a new contract or he just finished it. They have these hovercrafts that go on the beach. The problem is sand is getting up in these huge ball bearings. So they're spending so much money cleaning these. So just like a month ago, what Bob Lazar is doing is creating neodymium magnets to clean out the sand from these huge ball bearings on hovercrafts for the Navy. That's not, he's not a scientist? Oh my gosh, he's more of a scientist than any of us because he's doing it daily, weekly. Look, the smartest guy I ever worked for had a bachelor's degree, 40 patents, and an honorary PhD. No college degree at all. And he ran Oak Ridge's fusion work for many years. Yes, would I call him a scientist? Yes. Uh, uh, Do you call Bob Lazar a scientist? Maybe. Oh, come on, man. The guy runs a United Nuclear. Oh, hey, it's take what United, you can get. United, United Nuclear. United. Wait a minute now. I worked with he the real United with Nuclear government. back in the 60s. He has contracts with every agency. He's doing things that would blow your mind. Just, have you ever had a conversation with him? Have you ever been on the phone with Bob Azar and had an yes. in-depth? Hold on, because that's a point we've got to talk about then. You have had an in-depth, on-the-phone conversation with Lazar? I wouldn't personally? call it in-depth. Okay, so how in this, less in-depth was it? Like how many minutes? I have no idea. Did Several you, minutes. You, I tried to meet with did him. Did you ask him any scientific questions that he couldn't answer? I talked to somebody who interviewed him, had a physicist with him, and he couldn't answer any of the physicist's questions. Do you have a recording of that? Because I need proof, Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> you need proof, but you don't care whether he no, no, lied no, no, about no, his I, degrees. I, I, oh, it's not I don't care. I don't care about the degrees, I care about the bigger topic. I need proof of this conversation where he can't answer basic physics questions that you've said for 25 years. Let me tell you, he will blow your mind. If you sit down with him, scientist or not, which I've sat down with him with both, he will answer th questions and blow your mind. So this little story you've been telling, I can't buy it, got to call you out, man. You have not had an in-depth conversation with Bob Lazar directly. How can you make an opinion on a guy without talking to him? That's all I got to say. I did talk to him. All right. For like a minute? Because he Well, admittedly, never... he's very hard to get a hold of. And would you be willing to sit down with him, Stan? I tried to then. Of no, course I, I would. I would hope him. yesterday. I asked you two years Look, ago. I got here. asked by Gene Huff. Uh, who I think was here. He was. Yeah, he was. He was sitting back there. Yeah. Right? Let's stand uh, answer. I got asked by him, what would it take, this is 20-some years ago, to convince me that Bob was telling the truth? It was a friendly conversation. It wasn't an antagonistic one. This is just me, by the way. I'm not like, I, I'm not. <laughs> Don't have a heart attack. No, take it <laughs> Trust me, I'm fine. <laughs> can I? Um, Gene asked what it would take. I told him, well, a copy of his diplomas. Uh, you know, stuff like that, a resume, a list of his papers, uh, a number of such items. And okay, he gave me an address. I sent him copies of my diplomas. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anybody who's got a degree from MIT who can't provide it. But you never had an in-depth conversation with the czar. In fact, have you ever had a conversation with the czar on the phone? Yes. Okay, and, and, but literally, it was just to ask for his resume. I mean, there was no. No, I didn't ask him exchange. for his resume. So you never I was supposed got to, to meet with him. Degrees. You never got to ask him any scientific questions personally. So you're basing it on this other person. Well, let him answer. Have you been able to ask him scientific questions no. to verify? That would be great. Have to you do. attempted to do that? Well, I've asked George about making contact with him. Mm -hmm. I asked you two years ago, sitting right over there, if I could get Bob Lazar and you to talk and have a scientific conversation. Would you do it? And you kind of went like this to me. Eh. Like you weren't interested, so. Well, are you interested? Would you like to talk to him? I would like to have talked to him yesterday, sure. Well, great. What we'll do is arrange that. Let me call him right now. And Stan can tell us all about it next year. <laughs> the you know, I, I, What's that? why didn't it happen yesterday? Bob was in and out, and of course, like Jeremy said, he was extremely nervous. He didn't know what to, to uh, how this would go. Uh, he, so he came in and he was out. He wasn't interested at that time, but that doesn't mean that in the future it, it can't out. happen. So we will see what we can arrange, especially if, if he'd be willing to do so. However, of course, he, he might be, not be as interested to talk to you yeah. as you are. <laughs>
to him. Bob, Bob lives in Bob world. He does his scientific projects. He's doing incredible projects right now and his company, you know, United yeah. Nuclear, that's what they do. He really does not have a huge interest in being involved, but yeah. honestly, he might want to nip this in the bud. Yeah, that'd be great. Did he pass a polygraph test? Yes. I'm presuming he did. What is it we have to say about that? I'm satisfied that there is indeed an Area 51, and that it has, uh, I'll call it spacecraft, uh, for want of a better term. No better place in the country to put it. And it was built to do highly classified work, before there were spy satellites, I might add, uh, where you thought you could hide, but you can't now uh, as easily. So what he was doing out there, I don't know. I, his explanations yesterday were very crude, having worked in industry for 14 years, about what he was doing. And we, we've got a, a gravity amplifier. That, that's a great term, but he sure didn't tell us any details. I mean, there's a dome, and you can feel things when you when you go close to the dome. That doesn't. Is to the extent know how it worked that time? I mean, it's besides that we just don't understand. I, I don't know how much what he did was science and what he did there. <laughs> well, have you, has he written a paper about what he did when he was out there? What, what is it you want me to say about him? He was I, an interesting I, honestly, guy to I, watch. I want you just to stop saying the same thing that has nothing to do with the reality of the story. The story is George Knapp has done, has followed this story for 25 years yes. uh, compared to the 25 minutes, man, that you've done. And, and George Knapp uh. is telling us, George Knapp is telling us, not only does he believe Bob, but he's verified right and left almost every detail possible. So let's get away from this little, uh, he lied about his education. I don't even care. What I care about is, did he or did he not back engineer alien spacecraft that our government are holding? Now, I don't know the answer to that, but I do believe him. But I wasn't there, but I do believe him, and there's reasons for that. Did he so, figure out how they were? And, and the whole idea right here, the whole idea that he was doing nothing scientific and he just explained a dome, why don't you try that conversation with him in depth about the science of it. He has explained it in high detail, and probably you have all read it. I don't know if you haven't read it, but there's been a lot of information out there. And, you know, honestly, it takes, like, curiosity and persistence on a story to make a breakthrough. And that's what George Knapp has done for 25 years. That's what I've done for five years, and I'm more than satisfied. Satisfy yourselves. Get into it. Get into it. A couple of things. To be fair to Stanton, of course, he's, he's, he's uh, more than uh, he can have his own opinion. And I think that... Uh, Thank you. <laughs> beyond that, and I, I, it's impossible to say that Stanton has not done a, a significant amount of research. Certainly I, not as much I, as George I didn't say that. George compared Knapp, to George Knapp, Jeremy, but, 25 years compared yeah. to... It would be a, a ratio of 25 minutes, man. George Knapp <laughs> has de dedicated his career to this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to arrange the meeting still. Yes. But again, to be fair to Stanton and to put you on the spot again, clap your hands if you doubt Lazar's story. Oh. There's a few There's out the there, but meter. he wishes that you do because he does not want everybody banging on his door. So that's just fine. But hey, those doubters out there, thank you. You are real investigators then if you do something with that doubt. Do something with it. We can believe Bob Lazar's story without having to believe that he was working on extraterrestrial spacecraft at Area 51. Wow. Because he may... He may he, does appear to really believe the story that he tells, which may not be the story that we think it is, or that he thinks it is. So he may have been lied to, is that what you're saying? He may have been, de he may have been deceived himself. He you may know, have been led to believe there are extraterrestrial spacecraft, but it could have been just high-tech technology. Yeah, it's, just, it's so hard to understand how for so many years this guy could be like the professional best liar, even to his wife and, and his friends and his family and people, like his uh, grandchildren. And wow, he, he can't even remember how to tie his shoelaces sometimes. He's like a mad scientist, dude, and he's such a good liar. So I, I appreciate what you're saying. I, ho I wish we uh, disagreed on more. Yeah. But um, the problem is, is that um, 
what he ex you can't fake the physics of what he experienced out yeah. there. So you can try to embed yeah. thoughts yeah. in his mind, but you, you can't fake the physics of what he experienced yeah. out there. No, of course, I agree with you. But, I, but I, thank yeah. you. It's cool having the back and forth. <laughs> Did you want to comment on the physics, being a physicist? Well, I haven't heard what he, he's used words like they have a gravity wave amplifier. That, that's a simple description for this, this thing. It, yeah. Okay. Does that tell us the physics of what's going on? It was gobbledygook. When I listened to his description, it, you know, 500 pounds of element 115, he used to say. Now he backed off from that a bit. You can't have 500 pounds. The half-life is too short, frankly. So it, it sounds like there's a science fiction element in here. You notice I used the word science. I didn't just say fiction. Uh, Thank you. In other words, to say that he back-engineered, he was working there to do something. Yeah. Figure out how they work. R uh, rocket presuming. ships were science fiction until we invented them. I, I've been told directly by a high military uh, naval uh, engineer that Element 115 has great promise. So has great has great promise, promise for propulsion for fuel. So I just. You know, Stanton, Where are they going to get it? Okay, I, I would love to have a three-hour debate with you, even not as a scientist, about the science of it. I feel like I can parrot some of it back, but you need to have this conversation with the man himself. To work, we're working on that. Work on that. See how you Mark, that works have, for you. All right, let's get to the next question. Thank you. Next question. Actually, I think it's really highly um, unlikely that you can wash someone away with all of their stuff. That, that's a difficult thing for me to, to buy. But... Um, the idea that Bob Lazar had the ability and the technical knowledge to work on special projects such as this propulsion, absolutely 100% resounding yes. This is a guy who made jet cars, was inter he did more scientific stuff than I've seen like most anybody do. The guy had incredible jet cars. He was on the front page of the Los Alamos newspaper you know, w with his jet car. The guy has scientific knowledge. It's proven through his company, everything he's been doing for the last 25 years. The dude was a scientist, so I don't know, and is a scientist. But you sound like you doubt that he had those degrees as well. No, I, 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 that is not my issue. Again, I'm keeping my eye on the prize. Now, sure, in the conspiracy world, can you erase somebody? I think that's what he was kind of fearing is, is his thing. My thing is, I know he worked at Los Alamos. I have talked with people. But he claims he was but had the degrees hold, hold and they on. were erased, and you're saying that's not possible. Uh, no, I'm not saying it's not possible. Okay. I, I, I'm, I don't know is what I'm saying about erasing somebody's history. I'm not good at even doing anything. I like asked the legal counsel at MIT and they said you can't. Okay, that's great. So whatever the situation with that, the, 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 I think the key point here is that Bob Lazar worked at Los Alamos, has scientific ability, and then from there you can just deduce the rest. But I, you know, I don't know. You're right. And Stanton, did you want to answer that question? Do you believe it's possible then to erase his school records? Not according to the legal counsel at MIT and I don't know who else to ask. There are loads of good sightings. We have to expect that any advanced civilization, or plural civilizations, uses technology about which we know nothing. We're not the smartest guys on the block. We haven't had technology very long. Uh, it, it's one of the things I argue with the SETI people about. You think aliens are stuck at our level of radio communication when we've only had long distance radio since 1901? I mean, I think they're beyond that. So it's not a question of what you see is impossible, therefore it isn't, but what you see is interesting. How do we do it? Wouldn't that be nice if we could do that? And uh, there's a whole book that Kathleen Martin and I have done about uh, science was wrong, with all kinds of outstanding professionals saying something was impossible that turned out to happen not very long thereafter because they didn't know. They didn't, weren't ready to admit that there was stuff they didn't know. Eat man's ego gets in the way here. So the fact that you see something that's incredible is a good place to start with, gee, how could they do that? How could I do that? How could I duplicate that? And Bob is curious, it's okay, we'll let him work on it. My, my final comment is, is very simple. Um, I know Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar is the most kick-ass, amazing, uh, crazy, 
out there scientist that I have ever met. And I've chilled with nanotechnicians and nuclear physicists and a bunch of people. And I got to tell you, Bob Lazar is doing some of the most interesting work. He was painting um, some sort of radioactive isotope onto ants without killing the ants so that they can be tracked the other day. Who gets contracts like that? Well, scientists do. And <laughs> I mean, I am. Creative people do. I am so, yeah, you're a very creative scientist, actually. So I am um, just want to say, Bob Lazar is the most badass scientist you have ever heard of. For those of you that doubt his story, good. Weaponize that. Find out for yourself. Start digging because we want to get more from Bob, man. He doesn't want to give much. We want to get more from him. So do it. That's my final statement.